On today's episode, we're going to talk about how people are making $18,000 a month without being music artists on Spotify, and it has nothing to do with bots or any type of scam. We're also going to talk about an AI song that might get a Grammy this year and why we think the labels have an evil hand in this matter. On top of that, Spotify's new strategy to get people to pay more money. But before we get into all that, let's talk about making 18K off of Spotify though. Because I want y'all to think and guess how people are making 18K a month, potentially on Spotify without scamming. And mm. why Spotify low key is the scam for trying to stop these people's money. Here's the headline. Spotify reportedly has a $38 million white noise problem. Jeez, that's a big problem. That is a big problem, <laughs> right? Spotify is spending a lot of money on podcasts that don't actually involve any talking. That's according to a report from Bloomberg, which states that the company could increase its annual gross profit by a whopping $38 million if it steers away from so-called white noise podcasts. Now, what does this mean? Do you guys know what white noise is? Can you describe white noise? Yeah, it's like this staticky sound that people listen to to like meditate and relax and stuff. That type of thing. Yeah, that right? type of thing. Clear their mind. All right, yeah, you go have to all sleep. these. Different I usually go to sleep. You usually go to sleep. Sometimes, not all the time, gotcha. but every now and again. And just turn me on the tape with like some crickets <laughs> and stuff in the background. Give me a nice country set, and I'm good. <laughs> these kid, these kinds of podcasts play various types of relaxing sounds on a loop, like static crashing mm. waves or rain and they are more popular than you may think one of the reasons for their popularity is that spotify has been unwittingly means spotify didn't know about this pushing them in front of user thanks to its algorithmic push for talk content which is podcast i'm assuming that what they mean so basically people have been posting these podcasts well these white noise playlists or clips as a full content podcast, because you got to think about it, people trying to go to sleep, that's a long time. You need at least 30 minutes. You need at least 30 minutes <laughs> for me to fall asleep, right? <laughs> so they're posting in podcast format, and the creators behind these podcasts make money off the ads that play during the episodes. Last year, a report from Bloomberg suggested that white noise podcasters have been raking in possibly up to $18,000 per month from the ads placed in Spotify, and now it reports based on internal documents, those podcasts made up 3 million daily consumption hours, hours, 3 million hours a day consuming white noise on Spotify as of January 2023. Crazy. It's crazy, bro. It's, it's, it's two things that this makes me think of. One, every year I am disappointed in myself for not being first to a sp Spotify finesse because I feel like we've been in this long enough where we should see this coming. There's some finesse. Yeah, somewhere. like every right, we every should. year, bro. Every we year, every year, I'm like, damn, should have been me. <laughs> Second thing is, okay. At first, I thought they were monetizing on the podcast views, and I was like, I thought Spotify wasn't monetizing podcast views, but you're saying they're making money off the advertisement runs that's being ran between, which makes sense on why they did it as a podcast, not as a song. Yes. Yeah, that's crazy. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> exactly. So I'm actually for y'all out there who didn't know that, like, yeah, podcasts, you can run ads and like there's like these third just like YouTube basically. Mm -hmm. You can run ads on a podcast, you start a podcast, there's systems set up so you're able to do that. So, you know, maybe y'all wanna start some podcasts or start dropping all your albums or something as a as a full podcast. I don't know. So just some ideas. Like we shouldn't be the only ones to the potential finesse. <laughs> When Spotify noticed it was sending users towards white noise podcasts, the platform reportedly considered taking these shows out of its talk feeds, banning future uploads, and nudging its users towards other, oh, other kinds of content. However, this plan never panned out. The proposal in question did not come to fruition. They're saying, we continue to have white, uh, white noise podcasts on our platform. And the company didn't want to respond. Now, what is the issue? Why are they trying to stop this? At first, we did go, ah, look at Spotify, man. Y'all are y'all are just hurt as always. People finessing on your platform. And why is this finesse, right, in the first place? But y'all are trying to stop the money and wish y'all got the money yourselves, right? Mm -hmm. That was our initial thought. But then, during one of our internal meetings, a point came up that was very valid, Right? People are listening to these white noise podcasts to go to sleep. And now you got advertisers who are probably angry 
saying we're playing ads and paying for ads to people who can't even buy the shit. Yeah, I was thinking that. Subconscious thoughts. But my argument would be, hey, man, let me instill it into your mind. You just got to make a better ad. <laughs> See, and I would think that will also ruin the experience for the person watching it. Like, imagine you like almost there. you tired, long day, can't go to sleep, whatever. You finally about to fall asleep and then like a... Fucking like Ray Shadow Legend at come on or some shit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like I'd be like, man, like what? So I, but that is a good point. Like I think I don't know, man. Is a is a sleeping consumer just as valuable as an awake consumer? I think it depends on what you give them. Because I know that like the typical format, no, it's not <laughs> right. Because you're looking for a click through. You're looking to create yeah, yeah. some type of quick action, and it relies on a level of consciousness. And their ads aren't really built on Spotify. To be that long. So, but I do know I've also fell asleep in front of the TV before. And I've had dreams that integrated the <laughs> commercials. You know what I'm saying? I had some wild shit going on in my dream, and I wake up and it's a commercial or an infomercial on. You know what I mean? I'm like, dang, that's what I was just dreaming about. That's crazy. Right? So if you have the right ad, that could be. An evil plan to say, hey man, no, nah, let me take over these white noise playlists or let me drop my own white noise uh playlist and then integrate yeah. my stuff into it somehow in a more in a way that can be easily imagined and, and, and pictured for people. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think the I think the advertisers are making the wrong argument. You know, like the argument should be, hey Spotify, let's combat this with maybe some tighter integration features or some mm-hmm. some tighter uh retargeting functions that yep. Where I could maybe like, okay, this person at least touched my ad between 8 p.m. and 12 a.m. Let me let me hit him at, at two or three. You know what I'm saying? And when he on his lunch break, give me the the ability to do that. Cause I don't think. Oh yeah, I, hit I him back. Yeah. I hit him in his subconscious while he's sleeping, and yep. then I hit him again while he's awake, and he's like, "Huh, this seems familiar." Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I think yeah. I fuck with this. Like, so it's like that would be my argument. It's like, hey, like mm-hmm. we can't stop the habits of these people. Cause what you gonna you gonna kill off a whole genre? You know what I'm saying? To to make yeah. advertisers happy, like that's just crazy. You gonna piss off way more people than you gonna make happy. I mean, yeah, they said three, well, obviously a lot of those hours are because people are asleep, but three million daily hours. Yeah, that's at least that's a, a lot. At least a million people, I would argue. Mm. Nah, could be no. a three, probably at least a couple well, hundred well, thousand. Yeah, we talking about like eight hours yeah, sleep yeah, time. Yeah, yeah at least yeah. a couple hundred thousand. So like you gonna piss off way more people than you gonna make happy. So it's like, mm-hmm. hey, it's, you know, classic. Spotify de- deflection <laughs> tactic. Hey man, don't mm-hmm. be mad at us. We ain't the one sleeping during your 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 ads you worked hard on. Let's let's don't don't make us do anything. Let's just kick these motherfuckers off and and, and everybody be happy. But the advertising gonna be hurt when that shit drop. Yeah, because I don't know. I think on the Spotify pays out on ads on an impression basis or for something. Because it's on an impression basis, I guess it can because then Spotify will be the one. Trying to kill it if that was the case. If I was average, I was like, all right, man, let them sleep, man. Let's run these impressions up, man. Go on. Give me my $50 per CPM, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever the workout is. All right, so yeah, they do pay for impression. Oh, yeah. that makes even more sense on why they're siding with them. They're like, yeah, we right there with you. Let's kill this shit. Let's get this yeah. shit. Let's get this shit knocked out. <laughs> people, again, people are thinking about it wrong. You need to figure out how I can make some money while these people sleep, right? Mm-hmm. You want to make money while you sleep. Maybe that inc- requires you to make money while other people are asleep too. Yeah, I agree. Because I, I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm really big on the idea. Because I, the idea. Maybe shoot, I'm sure there's some artists. So shout out to some of the artists I know out there who have made their own meditation for mm-hmm. their fan bases. Right. That's a that is a deep level of connection with your fans. If your fans start meditating to your music, crazy, or you, your voice as a mantra. That's a deep level. Yeah. Imagine if you create something, an experience for fans specifically to sleep to. Yeah. All right. Some of y'all artists, y'all make some music that people can sleep to. And I don't mean like <laughs> <laughs> I do y'all were take it wrong. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. I didn't think you was gonna take it there, but it went there. I mean in a good way. I'm not talking about those the 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 bad music, right? I'm talking I'm talking about people who even if it's a good vibe, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's already a slow. I mean, you know, lo-fi and things like that exist. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you know, if you make a slow, chill vibe of music, it's something that can, you know, quiet the soul a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's the next uh, that's the next frontier of untapped ad space. Sleep. Like, sleep. the sleep brain, you know what I'm, I'm saying? Telling you. Like, nobody's cracked that cold yet. Bruh. Because <laughs> we know it works, bro. We just, we, we've all, we like, Charante, when we were waiting, just talked about 
him having uh, things integrate into his sleep as well. Like it happens, bro. It happens. So if we know that can happen, why not take over? Oh, that's kind of scary though, man. It like, is I, scary. I, I appreciate that the eight hours of you know no pressure to buy anything. Hey, well, maybe I can make <laughs> it in a way where I'm not doing. <laughs> Dead foot. Hey, bro. Got it. Got a nigga shopping in his dream and shit. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like that shit gonna be crazy. Like damn. Bro, we really are not safe. But uh, hey, you do it right. <laughs> I remember I worked this job going into college. It was the summer before college, and I was working so hard, dog. Like I was like the the bus boy, the front attendant. I was cooking. I, I did like everything, but it was like a real, real restaurant, and we would get these crazy rushes of like people who were like didn't make their flight at the airport, so they all came <laughs> in angry. Right? It would be like literally dead all day and then next thing you know like 40 uh 40 angry people who got a voucher to get free food oh the like, airline yeah. was sending them there yeah oh, exactly exactly, That's exactly. Up, up. so <laughs> <laughs> right so all of a sudden it'd be a huge rush and i'm handling it by myself because it's dead all this other time they're not gonna like hire like people you know what i'm saying and you never know when it's gonna come yeah. it's just me and the chef and then he'll have to go like go buy some extra ch- chicken tenders from a Walmart or something randomly ran out of food. So I end up cooking and doing all this other stuff. So long story short, anyway, like, I was working so hard at some points on some days where I could not turn my mind off of like doing the next thing at work. And I would go to sleep and I would be at work working in my dream. <laughs> and I said, I got to quit this shit. <laughs> I said, once I started working in my dream, I said, fuck this place. <laughs> I can't escape this shit. <laughs> but I know because of those type of experiences, bro, you can like you can like get into the conscious, the subconscious mind. You can get into the sleep, but maybe you create an experience that this is for better sleep. My music is for a, a you know better dreams. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to help supplement the mood. That that might be the way you go. And now it's a brand activation. Not, uh, I'm trying to convert you into a sale directly. This is just a extra experience. Yeah, I, I will fall for that. Yeah, that would get me. I'll fall Especially for from that. your favorite artist, yeah, you know what I mean? I'll fall for that. Like the Travis Scott tunes. That's to exactly sleep who I was thinking. <laughs> you already know, bro. From Rager to, to Napper, you know what I'm saying? Some shit like that. I'll fall for that. <laughs> it's going to happen, man. Somebody's going to do this. Somebody's going to do this. And I need y'all to like come back to this podcast as a reference that I, it is kind of scary for sure it, 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 saying, it, it, it's definitely a scary. laugh safe space but it's it, it dreams. also <laughs> <laughs> dreams are safe space that, i mean i guess that is true though it is true you know people do this stuff like hey i'm gonna focus on a certain subject before i go to sleep so then when i go to sleep my dream will be about that have you ever done that before yeah i got i got specific things i like to watch if oh, i okay. feel like i don't usually watch stuff to go to sleep i like I'm one of those people that like complete darkness and silence, you know what I'm saying? So you watch it in your mind? No, no, no. There are times where like, you know, I might have like company that likes to fall asleep and stuff or like, I don't know, like I'm not like super sleepy yet, but I know I will be in like 30 minutes, so like I might throw something on there. But in that moment, I have like, it has to be something where like, I don't have to think a lot about it. Yeah, yeah. So it's exactly. usually a lot of like bullshit YouTube theory videos about things that don't really matter in the real life, like maybe a video game or a movie or something. Something where like, See, I can I can be I'll be okay without the information. So that's to help cut your mind <laughs> off. But I'm saying like, hey, I want to dream about dragons tonight, so I'm gonna think about dragons. Oh no, I never. Did you that. never did that. Never. Yeah. Oh yeah. My, 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 <laughs> I used to do that. I used to do that. My daughter be doing that now. You said your daughter be doing that? Yeah. That's crazy man. I didn't tell her about. It. She just randomly mentioned the other day. He was like, oh yeah, I'm about to think about that, so I can improve my chances of dreaming about it. Yep. Damn, yeah, deep. <laughs> oh, she be saying some random deep stuff. That, that is for sure. Some of it is too deep for me. Like, where are you? Nah. Who taught you this? <laughs> <laughs> but, but nah, that's the thing. So if you can control, if we know that you can do things like that, again, like there is some room for a brand activation. If any place should start this, it would start with Calm. You know, the app, like the meditation app. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They That'd should, be perfect for. I feel like they should do that. Maybe one of the mattress companies, like I don't know any of their names, Sleeper Ten, yeah. something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what it's called, Sleeper Ten? Sleeper, let's just say Tempur Pedic, Purple. Tempur, I know a yeah, couple mattress, That'd be yeah. perfect for them. But then to your point, it's like who would be it? Because the only people that come to mind now would be the lo-fi people, and they usually don't have enough of a brand to where that be a 
a big enough play. And then like find an artist who's willing to dedicate an experience to it. Though. Yeah, because I'm saying, and, and to their my argument from the brand side would be like, well, your audience likes to stay in the house, you know, which is why they're listening to your music mm. right now. You know, so it would have to be an in-home activation because <laughs> we already are pretty sure they're not leaving the house to come do this, bro. That that would be brilliant, man. Bro, or like think about like. Cause I always wish they had this at festivals, bro. It's, I, I'm mad at festivals I haven't picked this idea, but they should be nap pods at festivals. Like they should be somewhere where I could be like, damn, I'm at this festival at one o'clock. It don't end until eleven. It's already three forty-five, and I'm drunk as fuck. I wish there was a safe space for me to go take a nap right now. I don't really want to see, you know, Lil Pump or you know, what I'm saying whoever this next. Idea. Let me go sleep through they set and get myself right, and then come back out. That would be a perfect place that would for be that. Expensive. A sleep pod. No, yeah. but there's some walls in the bed. It's cool. I'm not even talking about for the best. I'm just talking about as a user. I would charge a lot oh, because yeah. you would yeah. have to do it in a way where most likely you would say, "Well, we need to clean it." Like these yeah. are the hours, and we clean it after because you know festivals. Yeah. Sixty-five and up. I get nasty up in there. <laughs> yeah, so you got maybe a specific <laughs> amount of time, and yeah, we can clean it. But sleep pods would be nice. See, sleep is an entire it's an entire frontier. That's bro. what I'm we saying, might, bro. It's the yeah. last safe space, bro. And here we are giving ideas for the next generation to violate it. We might have to use <laughs> these, man. We got we 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 got plenty of uh when I make our my music money and it's time to start looking at other industry ideas, man. We might just start looking at the the sleep a the lot sleep harder. Sleep spaces, yeah. Like mattresses, bro. Like crazy. <laughs> crazy, bro. All right. We we gonna, we gonna go to the next subject. <laughs> Who knew that that subject would go that long? But <laughs> I think we stumbled on some gold. Okay, so one of the most important things that artists have to realize, if you truly become a brand, then everybody that buys from you no longer has to be a fan. I know that sounds mind boggling. You have people buy from you who support your career, who support your movement that aren't even fans. But the truth is regular businesses do this every single day. And that's how we had this realization that we then began to capitalize off of with our artists. And if you wanna see this for yourself, I'll show you for completely free. If you go to www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize, you have to put in www. And if you're on YouTube, you can find it in the description somewhere. So just go there and I'll show you the massive paradigm shift that we had that allowed us to start to help our artists monetize their audience way faster while increasing the amount of people that they can monetize at the same time. So basically, a lot more money, you know what I'm saying? So check it out, www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize while it's completely free to check out. Back to the conversation. Let's talk about the fact that Lil Bootsy said that he gets up to $40,000 just to do interviews on podcasts. Crazy. That's another that's another stream of income for artists. Yeah. yeah. Forty bands. I'll argue he might be pioneering that space. Pioneering. We look, we've known for a minute that a lot of people are getting paid to be on podcasts, mm -hmm. right? Like these big podcasts, these big shows. Either it's a PR team that's connected so you can get in the building, or there's smaller podcasts that when I say smaller, I mean not small in views, but small in terms of they're not working for iHeart radio station yeah. or something that are allowing people to, you know, pay a bag and get on there, right? Yeah. So that, in many cases, people will pay to be on the podcast, but then on the other side, if you're a valuable enough person to bring in views, people will pay to have you on. Yeah. So that goes back to entertainment value for all y'all artists who want to, like, make that happen. Who want to diversify Who want to diversify income. your <laughs> income. If you got a little bit of personality and people know that views are going to come, then, look, this entire marketplace runs off of money, right? Views drives money, drives advertising. If you are entertaining and people think they will be able to make money from you coming, they will pay you for an interview. Vlad TV, I remember he talked about paying Sweetie like 10K mm -hmm. for an interview. And if you know that I'm going to get a million views, it's like YouTube is a very easy platform to do something like that. We know Vlad breaks down his interviews into like 20 clips. Mm -hmm. So he'll probably get like, Five billion views off of that. Yeah. So that 10K, I mean, a million views is 10K basically on YouTube, actually. Yeah. So he'll probably, he would have probably profited, what, 30, 40K off of that interview himself, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's just like stock, right? It's like if I catch you and you continue to have a long, successful, fruitful career, and these people are going to run to YouTube to, to look you up, and, and there I am, you know what I'm saying? Still monetizing off this thing. Two, five, 10, 20 years later. Exactly. Oh, yeah, because we've also seen some crazy stuff happen 
like with whatever influencer or person, public figure, and then Vlad will post a rewind interview mm-hmm. that yep. happened three years before. Yep, yep he makes some more money yep. off of that. So one, look, being in the videographer game and doing those interviews, that's a nice bag if you can do it right. But two, <laughs> <laughs> on the other side, no, I, I think that really just comes down to the idea. If you are entertaining, people will pay to have you show up. Yeah, man, it's a super controversial take. You know what I'm saying? Feel free to eat me up in the comments for it. Uh-oh. But entertainment value sometimes will take you further than music talent. It's crazy to say. <laughs> it's crazy to say, but entertainment value spreads further than music. Yeah. Uh, music talent does. That's sometimes. probably most times, to be real. Nine, nine point two times out of ten. Yeah, m- music has a <laughs> has a has a tighter niche. Um, it's already hard to monetize music. It's easier to monetize entertainment, TV shows, and all these uh, books and all these other things mm-hmm. around entertainment. So. I you know controversial controversial in it only to the point that artists don't want to hear it. Yeah, I was about to say controversial to who the artist. Yeah, everybody else is like, nah, I feel you. <laughs> Next thing, Spotify. Now this one is crazy to me. Another one with Spotify. We're going hard on y'all today. Spotify wants to put in-app lyrics behind the paywall. Stupid. 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 I think that's a that's the, it's a short take. Yeah, we should just end it right here. Right? <laughs> Stupid and just cut. It. All right, y'all, we done. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, especially because it took them so long to even add lyrics to the platform. And then they're going, I think they just added like last year or the year before, and then they're going to charge me. Oh, we see you like it. And then we, now, now let's see if you're willing to pay for it. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to pay just for that. Yeah, but I went a long time without knowing the words. A lot of my favorite songs. I can keep it pushing. Rap Genius, Google, all that stuff is just, <laughs> man, like, y'all got to do better, bro. Y'all got to do better. And then the last thing is AI. An AI song is being added for Grammy consideration. So if y'all don't remember, by the way, there was that that ghost written song that was Drake in The Weeknd. Yeah. That song took off. It went super viral. Back once once we start seeing all these AI voice replacing songs. And that's the song. All right. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that song, the Drake song, got submitted for a Grammy. Crazy. All right. And then he also released a new song. This is interesting. It's so many interesting things about this. And I want y'all to listen to this because this is this is important. And this is why I think the labels have an evil hand in all of this. One, there was a conspiracy theory that they thought, like one guy pointed out that he thinks this big TikToker named Jake, who was also actually a pretty big artist, he probably got like 20 plus million streams at this point, like monthly listeners, I mean, mm. um, was behind it. He's the ghostwriter, whatever. But this is the most important thing, all right? I thought from day one, this is was a ploy for labels to be able to legislate around AI. You did set up, All right? Document it. And my whole thought process for those who missed it is similar when you look at fields like uh, crypto, right? When, anytime you see any of these th- these new frontiers that don't have real government legislation. It's great for those people who started. It's like, oh man, like we're crypto, we're free, we're unlegislated, and all those like unregulated, all that great stuff. Cool. Y'all think it's really gonna last like that? We can't really monetize this thing like we like we want to. Not mm-hmm. the entities and powers that be, unless we can use our power mm-hmm. our, and and legislate and regulate this thing and take our. You know, and then um, you know, run business as usual. And we can't protect people unless we do it. Right. And we can't protect people. Well, see, see, that's the that's the that's the fake out. That is the fake out. Now we got. So <laughs> think about we not being legal and tobacco being legal, and then the moment that hey, we can make a lot of money off of it, and we already figured that infrastructure out. Like, all right, it becomes more and more legalized because we're setting up infrastructure to legally be able to make money for it, right? Mm-hmm. Crypto. And the whole blockchain space is like, all right, cool. This thing is unregulated. We want it regulated, us investors, but people aren't going to invest heavily in something that's unregulated because that's a risk, right? Mm -hmm. So what do we do? We'll have a situation like what we did with, well, what Sam Bankman Freed had where, uh, what was the name of the stock exchange? FTX. Mm -hmm. Like, it all went to shit. Massive company. A lot of it mess. Uh, investment went down the drain and now they get to say see that's exactly why this should be regulated because people are getting screwed over honest hard working people so we use that as a ploy to then be able to regulate because there was a lot of smart people behind that stuff and yes you could say yes sometimes smart people get screwed but you also could look at it the other way is well who's benefiting from 
this company falling. And now what happens after that company falls? Well, there becomes an argument for now regulating it. Mm -hmm. What about this AI stuff? We've constantly heard, well, you can't regulate voices. Right? There's, there is no legal around this. And typically when things move forward, because there's always going to be technology that outpaces our laws because we only make laws retroactively. Oh, shit, that can happen. All right, let's make a law so that can't happen. Mm -hmm. So this is one of those moments in time. Yeah, people never thought about doing that with the voice because you couldn't mimic somebody's voices like you could mimic like a comedian impersonates, but it wasn't official enough. Mm -hmm. Right. And now it's so accessible. People are like, OK, this is scary because I can go sound like anybody at any time. And like that takes away a lot. That's a threat for anybody who wants to use their voice for income. And it's also a threat for anybody who can do something like pretend like your kid is calling you saying you need some money, send me some money. And it's not actually your kid. Right. Every way across the board. This is dangerous from a music standpoint, though. That means these people are ripping out my artists, like are ripping off my artist which I've invested in, like I got these people locked up into these deals so I can use this resource. I got I, the, uh, the Drake voice IP. You know what I'm saying? You're devaluing my IP if you can go, if anybody can now sound like Drake because the value of Drake might be his lyrics and might be his face, which is something that's also a likeness that I have the IP on, mm -hmm. right? So they're gonna probably have to do that too. Mm -hmm. Like the faces once we the, the uh, what do you call the face switch thing again? Uh, the app that does it. No, just like that. It's a name for deep fake. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. so, there's probably gonna have to be some regulation around that, but there's not yet. All right, so like because Drake's face is my IP that I'm investing in as well. Well, Drake's voice is my IP. So if I can make some shit like this happen and get everybody in an uproar then I can speed up the regulation of this. That's why I think the labels are behind this so, shit. So what you're saying, if I'm hearing you correctly, is that the labels are pushing this AI-generated song not to really win a Grammy. They don't really care about the accolade aspect. It's just to start the conversation so they can come in and say, hey, that's not right. Let us, let us stop it. Increase the <laughs> absurdity so you can then make an argument against the absurdity. Because this is... And if you know, if I gotta play devil's advocate, man, it's a it's a genius evil play. If that's the case because this happening was one of the big fears. Like artists were saying, like, man, next thing you know, AI songs are gonna be winning awards and taking all the money. So it's, I can see that, bro. The first play being a big award, second play being a big cash out. Right? We probably gonna start seeing headlines like, hey, this AI mm -hmm. Drake song made fifteen million dollars, and then boom, yep. now they taking your money and they taking your your opportunities, you need us, man. You need us to step in and stop all this shit. This is, again, man, labels. Labels are, I, I, I truly believe, some sense of label or entity or smart person in general is supporting this AI Drake weekend track so they can then regulate the conversation and use that as an argument to say, we need to hurry up this regulation because look, this is a threat to these artists. They're always gonna say it's a threat to the artists, but really I care it's a threat to my label who owns the artist in many of these cases. And Check this out though. This also goes to show why this has to be some entity, all right? Number one, there's a lot of viral songs like these, these um, deep fake boy songs that got created, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think the Drake Weekend one was the best one. But that one went way more viral. Mm -hmm. This one did have a lot more pomp and circumstance in terms of you got this person with the ghost, mm -hmm. uh, you know, name, ghost writer, and they got their, uh, the what the blanket on them, all that yeah, stuff, right? It was a lot more dramatic. It was a lot more dramatic, yeah. right? A lot more planned and orchestrated. Got a lot more attention, way more. Disproportionate amount of attention to every other song. Yeah. Like, none of the other ones even got acknowledged in there. So, hmm, that's that's fishy to me. Second thing, this one got submitted for a Grammy, that person. Everybody's not thinking about submitting for a Grammy. A random troll isn't thinking that. Yeah, this okay. has to be somebody in the music industry, period. Yeah, just somebody. Even if it's not like this deep <laughs> conspiracy, it's somebody with music industry experience, like real music industry experience. Yeah, because yeah, most artists don't even know 
And I guess some of y'all listening might not know, but it's just paperwork. You fill out some paperwork <laughs> to get yes. your shit submitted to the Grammys. Yes. Most people For think it's a process of just getting picked up naturally. And damn, bro, to your point, yeah, they they know that the average person watching it is going to think what you said, like, oh, this shit just started popping and moving, that the industry recognized it, picked it up. But like you said, meanwhile, it's just a motherfucker that had 20 minutes free one day and submitted a Grammy app around right. Because it's Grammy consideration. Yeah. We're not talking about nomination, yeah. but people are going to hear Grammy. People don't even know the difference. Yeah. So it's somebody with a level of knowledge here. Hold up. <laughs> this is going to make it very clear because you one of these guys, bro. You think like this. And this is what people be wondering like, oh, man, Sean, you be, you're, you're, uh, like being skeptical of certain things. I'm like, no, I'm, I know that this shit is a fake because that's exactly what the fuck I would do. <laughs> this is the connection you're not making, bro. I'm going to read it again and I'm going to see if you make the connection now. All right. All right. Headline one. AI generated song that mimics Drake and The Weeknd submitted for Grammy consideration. All right. Subheadline. Ghostwriter, the person behind Heart on My Sleeve, also released a new AI generated track that sounds like Travis Scott and 21 Savage. Oh, the promo angle. The promo angle. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you did the Grammy consideration and you released a new track. That's a fucking rollout, bro. Man, you know what made me think about it, too? Actually, I just had a conversation before we started shooting this episode with uh-huh. some label people. And I pitched to them an a AI play. And I was like, you know, AI is hot. The ghost dude bet we should run a play for this artist. Whole call went quiet. And I was like, it sounds like a no. You know what I'm saying? But like, I was like, can y'all like... Educate me, like, why are labels so against um, the AI play? And the guy basically said, I mean, it boils down to the bottom line, like, we can't monetize it. He's like, now, as you know, as people behind the marketing, if it just happens and we six degrees separated from it, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Go for it, country brand, y'all do y'all thing. He's like, but if it ties back to us and then the label sees we're making plays, spending money on things that can't be monetized, then that falls back to us. So now, to your point, that will mean that if this song, not even just so the, if the Drake song and the Twenty One Savage songs are allowed to continue living, they haven't been taken down at this point. That means that the labels attached to the artists have to be in bed some way. It may not be to your point monetization because I don't think these songs are on Spotify and stuff, right? So yeah. maybe they work that details out. But the play could be like you said, the legislation play in the future. But that speaks out to me. There's a promo play here, which means that. The ghost guy definitely plans on making money from it. And the only way the labels would let this continue living is if they had a way to make money off of it, too. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. There has to be something bigger than it. Yeah, this, this ain't just regular internet fun troll. God, That's damn. all it is. That's all I'm saying, yeah. man. Yeah, we about to get assassinated. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> you know. <laughs> ain't no me and we, bro. <laughs> We will leave, we'll leave that to you. I'm gonna hold it down and then keep potting for both of us, bro. <laughs> oh man. Well, let's, let's read a little bit more details on this article. Let's see if they drop anything else. After the anonymous artist Ghost Rider went viral with their AI generated track "Heart on My Sleeve," which means Drake and the Weekend uh, mimics what Drake and the Weekend earlier this year. Dang, that was just earlier this year. Sheesh. Yeah. Representatives for the unknown and recently disclosed track in an interview with the New York Times. The, said that they submitted their controversial song for the next year's Grammy Awards. Representatives. Is he even that talk? Like I said, these are some music industry people. I don't care. Like At the very end, you can talk about the level, but we know these are music industry people. Yeah, definitely. Right? It's too smart like, of a play, bro. Yeah, playing the PR, talking to P- Billboard specifically. Like, this, like, it's obviously music industry because it's so, like, you're hearing from these outlets. Mm-hmm. You're not just seeing stuff come up and pop up from like regular organic routes. This isn't organically going viral and moving that way. Yeah. And then the industry, we all know the industry is slow to shit. Anytime the industry is early on some shit, they then do. you know it's yeah, a nigga like it. us behind it. Yeah. <laughs> but And where's the outrage? There was so much outrage during the first wave. Now it's all peachy keen, hunky dory. Like, oh, look at this cool AI song that came out. Oh, this AI song is getting, you know, number. like where is the outrage that was here th- yeah. three, four months ago? You know? Right, right. I mean, some shit done been worked out. Behind the scenes. The only time I ain't mad at something is when I know I'm going I'm to make something from it. I ain't making that from it. Hey, bro, I got a lot of anger to distribute. Hey, there, there you go. There you go. There's a reason not to be angry in this one. Oh, let me get rid of that. That's a distraction right there. Damn, I thought Ghost was for the people, bro. It's crazy. <laughs> that was, Yes. I'm glad you just said that because that was a part of the argument. This position, like, we're going to take down the industry, mm-hmm. all of this BS. 
And I love, man, and this is why I try to get at people, man, for being so like responsive to those <laughs> angles, man. People love those type of angles, and those are the angles that people use against y'all, man. <laughs> like, because they know that that's what you're going to hear. Like, it's easy to go against the industry and then go for the artist and the small man. So if somebody wants to get something done, they're going to position it as if it's the small man. Mm -hmm. You don't think people are thinking about this, man? People got time, man. People got time. Mm -hmm. And those are the two. Like, you got little kids, like the young folks who control the best because they don't have, they got all the time in the world. And you got just like broke people, like who don't want to necessarily give money. They got all the time in the world. Then you got really rich people. Who got all the time in the world? And the resources. All right. It's the people in the middle. Like, and, and we can't just be responsive to, <laughs> to, to all these other folks, man, these three categories who have the ability and, and resources or just time to take over our little, little valuable time that we have left after we make our money and take care of our, our families. Now, let's let's finish this. Um let me see. Last April, Heart of My Sleeve was pulled from streaming services after generating more than 600,000 plays on Spotify and 275,000 view, views on YouTube. Following the outrage, Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, Tidal, and Deezer yanked the song from their respective platforms in a statement. UMG denounced the track and a usage of AI by saying viral, the viral postings demonstrate why platforms have a fundamental legal and ethical responsibility to prevent the use of their services in ways that harm artists. Look at here, oh Universal, standing up, standing up for the little man. Yeah, I was just about to say bro, cause I just looked it up real quick. So Drake and 21 are both Republic artists, Republic is on the UMG. Mm. So it's like, hey, if we're gonna do this, we gotta do this with some artists who IP we can control and make sure it don't go too out of hand. Come on, come on. I mean, it just adds up, bro. It <laughs> just it just adds up. Like, you know, I'm not look, and just to let all of y'all know, because Corey made a, you know, a unnecessary projection out there. You know what I mean? He 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 put a we out there that should just be him. <laughs> you know I mean? Hey man, this was your grand out there, man. I'm hey, bro. You, know. hey, you know, Jacory throwing those things out here just to let everybody know. This is nothing that I spend any of my energy looking into. <laughs> this is a topic on the board, and this is just what I see from the things I add up. I'm not looking further into this after the podcast. <laughs> if anything else comes on the table, uh, and, uh, and we just happen to be reading it. I didn't even read the article, and this is just also all the dots. I'm sure other people will go further down the rabbit hole, and it will just probably validate a lot of the stuff we're saying right here. Yeah, man. If you listening, Lucian, whoever you know cuts these checks, Big Lou, good, good, <laughs> good or bad, I don't think nothing's wrong with it. I think right. this is a genius play, and I'm glad to be the one to, to be able to point it out and, and, and right. see it playing out. You know what I'm saying? Which actually is worth being said. A lot of times when we um, like break down marketing plays and things like that. Like usually, we're doing it out of admiration. Yeah, exactly. People that like we don't do the whole complaining. They're just doing this. Is like like what did I say earlier? Usually it's like it's because I would have did it too. That's the only. Reason. Man, but I wish that was me I'm that like, came this up with is this. Beautiful. Idea. Like, damn, Keep me did, up next time. Why did not think of that? Yeah, it, it, this is beautiful. Um, Mason told the paper that he sent. Who is Mason? I missed that in this article statement saying da 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 da. da. Mason, well, anyway, whoever Mason is, we'll put the article below so y'all could probably read through all that. But we just won. Uh, Mason told the paper that he sent Ghost Rider a direct message on social media after the song's explosion and organized a virtual roundtable discussion with the Recording Academy to understand further the powers of AI. Ghost Rider attended the meeting with a distorted voice, further hiding their identity. <laughs> I missed all that whenever that happened. That sounds weird. That's interesting. I knew right away as soon as I heard that record that it was going to be something that we had to grapple with for an academy standpoint, but, but also from the music community and industry standpoint. It's not true. They could have they could have ignored it. They ignored dozens of albums and singles that's popping all yeah. the time. They could just not embrace it. I don't understand that. <laughs> like that record. I mean, maybe you said from an academy standpoint, eventually through because of what AI is becoming capable of. But if you're, are y'all implying that yeah, that record was so good, we were gonna have to <laughs> decide have to. whether or not it could be submitted. I don't know. As if they haven't delved bigger. Right. <laughs> when you start seeing AI involved in something. 
so creative and so cool, relevant and of the moment, it immediately starts to get you thinking, okay, where is this going? How is this gonna affect creativity? What's the business, business implication for monetization? The Recording Academy announced artificial intelligence protocols earlier this year. Okay, so they're making way. Um, only human creators are eligible to be submitted for consideration for, nominated for, or win a Grammy Award, the Academy stipulated. A work that contains no human authorship is not eligible in any category. The Academy may disqualify any entry in a particular category if it determines in the Academy's sole discretion that such entry does not incorporate meaningful and more than de minimis. I'm sure that means like the minimum in Latin or something like that. That's just going to be my guess. <laughs> <laughs> human authorship that is relevant to such category. So, oh, the Academy offered a definition of that term, de minimis, is defined as lacking significance or importance, so minor as to merit disregard. So the minimum around, like something like that, right? Um, or, or significant. Okay, anyway, I think that's enough, yeah. right? Y'all yeah. should go listen to that, uh, that 21 Savage, Travis Scott uh, AI. I think that one was way better personally, as I told y'all, than the Travis Scott weekend one. I would play that one. And... I don't know, uh, uh, Sharante, you know, uh, it, if this was on um, Utopia, it might, might be might be in the top five on Utopia, in my opinion. But <laughs> An insult to who, man? It's a compliment to, to, to the authorship. Oh, which, by the way, if this is being submitted for discussion, yes, that means man. they're acknowledging the writer mm -hmm. of this because he wrote the lyrics. Mm -hmm. All right? Which means so, he, he has to be a Recording Academy member then. Or... Yeah, because I think, don't you have to be a recording academy member to, no, nah, you have to be one to vote. Yeah, you have to be one to vote. No, nah, I was wrong. You got to be one to vote, not to submit. Hold up, hold up. All right, here we go. It says, in order to submit to the Grammys, a person must be a member of the recording academy. Oh, uh, damn, there it is. Here's another uh, quote. It says, to be submitted for a Grammy consideration, a recording must be entered by members of the recording academy who are either professional or voting members. All right, that doesn't fully... Smoking gun, the track itself, right? Right. This is like to be submitted. A recording must be entered by members. Yeah, so you made the argument that he knows somebody, right? Like yeah. you cannot be a member and I submit for you. Yeah. Hmm. But then, like I said, my argument to that would be, in order for them to claim the human aspect of it, that means that the ghostwriter would have to be registered as a songwriter, which means they know who he is. They at least know his name. Yeah, I think I, that. I mean, that that would be a fair assessment. Yeah, unless he got an alias. Mm. So then I think about. It. I don't remember them asking me for my ID or nothing when I signed up to be a recording academy. I don't remember no ID check, no background check, or nothing like that. All right, so we are out of time. But for those of y'all who are listening at this point, please let us know if the person who is actually a artist or a writer producer on a track. It has to be a member of the Recording Academy for that track to be submitted as well. We know that to put some to to make a submission, right? You have to be a member. So for me to say, hey, Jacory should be um, considered because he wrote a dope track. I have to be a member to do that. But does Jacory have to be a member for him to be considered, or does he then have to become a member? Like if anybody knows those details, let us know. Please. Let us know. All right. That is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. I'm Brandon Sean. I'm Corey. And we out. Peace. Appreciate you for watching. If you like content like this, you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at nolabelsnecessary.com. And the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is... We don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information. There's play by play in courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. And you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members. And it's free just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.